Good morning, church, and I hope you are ready for another morning Devo. Good morning. It is October 1st. Man, that's hard to believe, isn't it, that it's October 1st? God, we have just gone by. Remember when COVID first started? That was like back in March, and here we are already in October, and we initially started the, the morning Devos during the COVID time. And it's just continued on where we've just kept doing it. And um, it's been fun for me, and I hope it's been fun for you guys too. So we are in part three of the book of Hebrews this morning, and we're going to pick up right where it says, um, uh, verse 14, For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Isn't that a great morning Devo right there? that we don't seek, we don't have a continuing city to fight for or to, um, you know, uh, um, make sure that we're a part of, I guess. But it says instead we have a continuing city. Uh, We don't have one, but we seek one to come, right? He's trying to get these people's eyes off of the here and now and on to the everlasting, which is hard for us to do, right? Because all we really know is the here and now. And you think of uh, the Hebrew people in Israel being persecuted, the Christians, and how easy it is for them to get back into Judaism and get back under the law of God. And uh, that would have been a simple um, remedy to their problem. Um, But the, the writer says, hey, don't don't give up Jesus. There's something better for you in the in the life to come. And it's interesting how, you know, when you think about the life to come and you think about the promises that are in the Bible on the life to come, I can't think of really anything greater probably than Jesus' words in the book of John where he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. And then he says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go now to prepare a place for you that where I go, you will be also. And you think of that statement of Jesus, and it's pretty radical, right? Because Jesus tends to talk about the heaven, the place of heaven, the dwelling place of God, heaven, as like his hometown, um, just like you would probably talk about, you know, wherever you're from. You might know the streets. You might know where your school was. I know I was back in uh, Southern California the other day, and I got to actually run back there t- uh, tomorrow. But, um, uh, you know, when I was there, I, I told Sylvia, I said, hey, let's stop off the 5 Freeway and let's go off of Sullen Boulevard and let's l- I want to look at my old place, my old house. And so we went in there and we took pictures of my old elementary school and the neighborhood. And it was just really uh, interesting to see. But I, I have an imprint of those things. Well, Jesus talks about heaven as like that is his place. That's his where he's from. And so he says, man, I go to prepare a place. I have meant, you know, that my father has many mansions for you, man. He's got a ton of thing. You know, and it just reminds me of this morning of this this passage in verse 14 of Hebrews, right? Um, we have no continuing city here, but we seek one to come. We're seeking one that's to come there, and that's where our eyes need to be. You know, do I trust in Jesus' words this morning? Um, do I believe that he has a place prepared for me? And that's really where I want to sink my heart in, my hope in. Uh, What if your hope was just in a city here? What would that be like? What would, what, I mean, how varying would, would that be in your life, right? You would have a lot of ups and downs based on this city. But we have something that says does not change. That's why he said in this chapter, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a non-changeable platform, foundation that we trust in. 
and therefore it becomes immovable. And that's why people over the years have reached out with the gospel of Jesus Christ with incredible hope, even, even to the point of dying, and missionaries going all over the world sharing their faith, sharing about the new life in Christ, the freedom that we can have in Christ, meaning we're no longer going to be judged by the Father, but we're forgiven. And these kind of things just, uh, you know, they shared with hope. Hope in what? Hope in a city that is not here, but something that's permanent in heaven. Those, those places that Jesus has prepared for them. And therefore they can endure. It led them to endure incredible pain and suffering, knowing that there was something greater. And this is, isn't this what the Bible teaches us? I mean, when I think of the book of Romans, and I think of some of the most amazing passages that are in these, in these uh, sections of Scripture. Um, let me try to find one for you because it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Isn't that interesting? There's going to be a glory that is going to be revealed in us at some point and it says that our present time our present suffering is not even worthy to be compared with what is the glory that's going to happen in us there's going to be a, a transformation of us um, when we are uh, going to be in this heaven heavenly state um, there's going to be something about us a change in us new eyes to see things that God has prepared for us a new body to be able to witness to to feel to associate to be intimate with the the place that God has prepared for us um, all that is, is part of that hope and so people have been able to endure incredible trials and suffering um, through these difficult through their difficult times because they don't seek a city from here, but they seek one to come. So hopefully that registers with you this morning and, and me too, is that I don't have a continuing city here, but we seek one to come. And that's where my mind needs to be this morning. And I hope that's what you're thinking too, is my mind needs to be about that place to come hope so I can endure and with this writer saying you have to endure the disgrace that's going to happen when you step out of Judaism and you move into the fulfillment of Judaism and that is Messiah Jesus uh, Jesus the Christ Jesus the Messiah he says therefore let uh, therefore by him by Jesus let us continually offer the sacrifices of praise to God so our sacrifices aren't one like the Old Testament priest our ours is a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips right praise to God like the Psalms right praise the Lord um, and you know giving thanks to his name now what I like about this is is that this is a real um, it really hits me because there was a time where when I first was coming into the church where I, I su was super embarrassed to sing. I, I didn't um, understand really this idea of a sacrifice of praise. Like, what is that? I would, I'm, you know, and we praise, by the way, human beings praise all the time. We praise, every, we watch something on TV and we go, wow, that was amazing. We watch a sporting event and we get up from our chair and go, whoa, that was great. We are people of praise. We praise everything. We are worshipers at heart. You can be the biggest atheist ever to walk the planet and you still worship. You praise something. And so everybody, every human being has it built in them to praise. Why? Because we were made to worship. 
to praise and we're going to praise something but i was always embarrassed to to sing and um and uh, and and then it just kind of hit me like where like hey why not i sing about other things and i have other songs in my head that i've listened to my whole life you know songs get stuck in your brain and you sing them and you know they talk about whatever they talk about but you tend to praise that and you tend to praise other things so hey why not start singing about the one you value most and you know really what's amazing is there's something to be said about just singing audibly like opening up your mouth and 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 having air come out you know <laughs> song come out and even if you can't sing on key you don't know you know your major scales you don't know minor um uh you know you don't know do re mi fa sol la ti do you're not like you don't know those pitches really well there's something about just offering right the the like it says offer give offer right draw near you know the sacrifice meant to make holy um in in the in the book of he uh, in the hebrew language offering meant to bring near to offer to to with our lips we bring near right we come near we bring near we you know with god right we have this intimacy it's like this coming into the presence right with singing rejoicing with singing the psalmist talks about and but that offering it takes something and it's amazing how many people will sit in church and they'll just be totally like they won't move their mouth at all they'll just be like whoa and i i can relate to that because i remember you know those times where i would just sit and kind of watch and then it hit me like why am i watching these people worship the lord on on a stage or in the front why don't i actually bow my head and just pray and so that's what i started doing i started just bowing my head and just praying and like the whole time that the person would be singing um and and that guy was pete lejoy back in my day a guy named pete lejoy awesome dude and uh um but he would be singing and and i would be just i just bow my head and pray the whole 30 minutes or whatever and i would just think of everybody i could and just be praying and and over time it's like the the you know just the words of of the the praise song would hit my heart and i would find myself tearing up you know when i was 17 years old i'd just get a little tear in my eye and i'd just be like whoa that's so powerful you know jesus loves me you know how great is the lord and man his grace you know just man and it just hit me you know and and then but i had this pride you know and and pride always like hinders you from wanting to offer you know wanting to give not just pride but fear and all kinds of other stuff fear of what other people will think and you know i had to finally just give that up and just learn to say hey i'm not going to i'm not going to be i'm not worshiping other thing other people around me i'm worshiping the lord and i'm going to offer my voice to the lord whatever that voice is i don't believe i have a great voice but i just offer whatever it is i can offer and and it's amazing the 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 it's called fruit of our lips isn't that cool fruit something something sweet something tasty you know offer the fruit it's something that god sees as beautiful as precious the fruit of our lips giving thanks oh give thanks to the lord for he is good right his mercies endure forevermore right giving thanks to his name you know part of our singing is being thankful you know we offer because we're so thankful for eternal life we're thankful for jesus we see jesus is precious and if you're if this morning you know think about you know the offering of your your voice to the lord giving god your voice and you know i think if you if you do like just give your voice to the lord you'll see so many other areas of your life start being worked on you'll start working on you know your fear of other people you know um you know get, getting your mind off of yourself the selfishness that might have a grip on you um as you just learn to offer 
some of those fruits of the lips. So I kind of love that, right? When you think about the eternal life and you think about the hope that we have in Jesus' words, that we have a place for us, it overwhelms our heart. And and the writer of Hebrews says, so offer. So, you know, hey, what does a priest do? They offer things. And you being a priest, right, as it says in the book of Peter, we are a kingdom of priests. Hey, offer, offer the Lord the fruit of your lips, right? The best of your lips. Don't don't leave your praise just for other things, right? Sports, politics, whatever it is. Don't leave your speech just for that. But give God the best of your speech. You know, that's kind of how I see that. So, hey, it looks like we're going to be in a part four. There's so many wonderful little parts to this chapter 13. I almost was thinking that you could read chapter 13 in uh, every day. I've said that about other chapters too.